like to welcome everyone to Ebenezer's Transfiguration Sunday and Fourth Black History Sunday, February 27th, 2022. I will do the acknowledgement of the territory. As we gather together at Ebenezer United Church, we acknowledge this sacred land on which our church operates. It has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. This territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wapum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Confederacy of the Obuje and allied nations to, to peacefully share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, the meeting place of Toronto is still the home of to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. We are also mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. People across Canada celebrate and recognize the month of February as Black History Month. This month's celebration is an opportunity for us to understand Black histories going beyond stories of racism and slavery to spotlight Black excellence. In addition to spotlighting excellence, we celebrate the legacy, history, and achievements that Canadians of African descent have made and continue to make. We recognize our commitment to equal rights, opportunity, and freedom from discrimination in the GTA and across Canada. The theme for this year's celebration is Black health and wellness. As Black people, it is imperative that we are not just existing, but that we exist with the understanding that our health and well being are paramount and above everything that our soul is well. Uh, uh, John chapter one declares, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Black people have been historically underrepresented and face many more systemic barriers. This is why we recognize Black History Month. It is an opportunity for all of us to learn this vital narrative and better understand the struggles Black people in Canada faced then and face even now. As a church community, we stand with Canada and celebrate the legacy of our Black brothers and sisters who have stood robustly, elevated, and left us strong and influential shoulders to pivot on. As acknowledged by Paul in 1 Tim 6 to 12, he encouraged Timothy to fight the good fight of the faith. We will fight the good fight. Yeah, okay. We will fight the good fight by maintaining a godly character, reject, rejecting racial biases, seeking godliness with contentment. And I will go over the announcements. So on March 3rd, we wish, we wish happy birthday to Ryan Carrion and happy birthday. Ebenezer Rocks, uh, we thank, thank you to all of the supporters and walkers for this year's coldest night of the year in support of Blue Door. Uh, not only did you meet the challenge, you exceeded the original goal of $500 with a collective donation of over $5,500. Annual reports available by email or pickup at the church by the end of the week. Uh, please let Susan know if you wish to have a printed copy to read in preparation for the annual me meeting following the service on March 13th around 11, May 11 a.m. There will be communion on March 6th, so please prepare a Holy Communion meal of bread and grape juice at home for the service. If you would prefer to pick up a single serving 
community communion cup or water and water from the church you can email or call susan at the church office uh, details in the e-bulletin we will have a special guest after service on sunday march 6th uh, justice and outreach committee has invited cheryl lindquist the executive director of the crisis pregnancy center to join ebenezer after service she will update us on their programs and will answer any questions you have during our time together around 11 a.m. God's Garden Project is this mar March. It is a weekly family ministry program on Zoom. If you are a parent, grandparent, interested in nurturing your family's health, you can contact Rever Doc Reverend Dr. Shin to learn more, and you can register at ebenezeruc at gmail. There will be Lenten there will be Lenten reflection series focusing on anti-racism. You can sign up for these Zoom meetings during the Lent season of 2022. This is a project to reflect on racism more intensively as Christians and to share one's thoughts of the articles or stories that you receive daily by email during the 40 days of Lent from March 2nd, Wednesday to April 16th on Saturday. This meeting has no class or lecture and no revolutionary ideas. It is a time to set. It is a, it is a time to set to share mutual reflection on racism as a social disease, pray together for true reconciliation, and facilitate a sense of God's kingdom over racial and cultural barriers. So there will be seven uh, online Zoom meetings each Wednesday from March second to April thirteenth, all at ten a.m. and contact. Information is in the e-bulletin. This week, office hours are from Tuesday to Friday, 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. And uh, there will be there will be uh, the Lantern Reflection meeting at 10 a.m. on Wednesday again via Zoom. Uh, the Good Food Pickup will be between 12:30 and 2 p.m. on Wednesday, Friday the annual reports mailed out. And on Saturday will be sandwich delivery at Ebenezer UC from 10, 30 a.m. to 11, 30 a.m. And next, next Sunday will be our first Sunday in Lent with communion via Zoom with Reverend Dr. Shin and worship leader Jane Smythe. And you can meet again, you can meet us after service to welcome Cheryl Lindquist from the Crisis Pregnancy Center. All other upcoming notices are posted on the e-bulletin. We proceed the worship with a call to worship. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. We are each a child of God, no matter who we are or where we are on life's journey, we are blessed. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. We come to worship the God who feeds us, who fills us, and who blesses us. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Let us rejoice in the love of God and worship our God together in prayer, song, and praise. We light this candle in the name of the one who guides us into deep waters, who implores us to wait a little farther in, where God is at play, bringing us into good trouble. We seek Christ's presence as we light this candle. The first hymn we are going to sing today is a South African traditional song, More Voices 151, Your Will Be Done.
Let us pray for this service together. O God of many blessings, be with us in our joy and in our sorrow. Help us to reach out with your love to those in need, that we may not be satisfied until all are fed. Bless each of us here and all who cannot be present with us today. Shower your blessings on our worship this day. Amen. The next hymn we are going to sing, More Voices 188. I thank you, thank you, Jesus. Today's scripture reading, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The next reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 20 to 31. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seeds, seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 
So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to every thing that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for fruit, food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thank you, Nigel, again. Today, I do like to talk about creation. The term creation is the key concept of we UCC members. Before we discuss it, I want to confirm that God does not call us to be an environmental list or an environmental activist. Last week, I met one lady from another church. And she told me that she and her family wanted to move into a new church. She said, we don't have any Sunday school curriculum. Instead, they have been teaching the children's environmental education program by NAAEE, North American Association for Environmental Education. She said, I'm not sure that that is what the church is supposed to do. What do you think about that? I believe her concern should be worth conditioning. Well, her concern needs to be considered. The church is not a place to think about environmental issues, but it is a place probably the only place to learn, share, and serve Christ. We, the church, should not do anything but to put Christ into our center. Nonetheless, it cannot be denied that it is important for us believers to live in an authentic relationship to all other living creatures. Do you know why? Because creation matters to us as well as God. These days, interest as well as concern in environment is on the rise more than ever. We have recently realized more deeply that our living and flourishing entirely depend on the status of our nature and all other creatures. As plants and animals are internally related, we humans have been getting more certain that we are interconnected with all creatures and probably have the same destiny as the rest of creation. Let us hear what Haley Allen Honey, who is Christian ethics professor, he says. The solidarity of humanity with nature also stems from the fact that humans have material bodies. For example, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7a, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. People groan along with nature because their physical bodies are in, the, in bondage to decay, even as the rest of the material creation. This physical dimension is an essential part of what it means to be human. Humans are not only spiritual beings, they are embodied spirits. What does this mean? It points out two things. First, 
we humans naturally turn out to be the most connected of all creatures. And second, as Christian groans, I mean grieves, that brings untold damage to us. Yes, creation matters to us, not only because we are interconnected with it, but also its condition has a huge impact on our living and flourishing. But here is another reason. Creation matters to us. Why? Because God sees all his creatures as intrinsically valuable. Here's your question. Do you remember what God said whenever God completed his creation each day? In Genesis chapter one, God said it seven times. Yes, it was good. Against any dualistic notion that heaven is good while earth is bad, Genesis declares on each day of creation that God saw that it was good. Seven times in Genesis 1, God observes his creation to be good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 4, after he had spoken light into existence, he declared it to be good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 10, after separating the water from the land, he called that good. After creating plant life, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 12, he saw that it was good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 18, after putting in place a system for lighting the earth and for separating night from day, he calls that what? Yes, good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 21, after creating animals, he observes that to be good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 25, after populating the land with animals and insects, he calls that good too. Finally, after creating humanity as the capstone of his creation, he observed all he had made, all he had made and declared it to be not just good, but very good. The Hebrew word translated as good in the English is tov. The term rendered very good is hana tov, which could be translated as certainly good or surely good. It is noteworthy that the word good is never actually defined in the Bible. The concept is simply assumed. It does seem though that kind of good referenced in Genesis 1 is a good in qualitative sense of functionality. Because of the success in design and execution of all that was created, it could be that God was calling things good because they were effective for fulfilling the function for which he designed them. If so, this would reflect a kind of instrumental good. However, this does not mean that creatures have been given to humans as the instrument of their own benefit. They are certainly not created merely for human use. They are good in themselves, in God's sight. Simply to say, all the creatures are intrinsically valuable. That's how God sees them. On the basis of this understanding, Richard Beckham argues like this. Because God is the source of all good, and it is God who has made the creatures good, the best way of expressing the value of the creatures is that they have value for God. They matter to God. And in the end, that is why they must matter to us. Unfortunately, we tend to misunderstand the Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 as a sort of right to subdue and exploit, exploit the world for human benefit. But that's not true. When the creator blesses human creatures, 
at the end of sixth day of creation, God blesses them and say to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the bird is in the sky and over everything create every living creature that moved on the ground. The important thing, probably the missing point that this verse notify is that being fruitful and increasing in number is a God's design, not just about human well-being, but about the well-being of all living creatures. For example, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 22, after creating every kind of sea creature and every kind of winged bird, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. What does this mean? All creatures have the right to live and flourish from their environment. This is a part of the interconnectedness of the created world. Which don't get me wrong. This does not mean that humans are equal with other creatures. God created us humans in special intention and substance. God gave humans a special right that the other creatures don't have. For humans, that right includes occupying and farming the land as well as the sea. But here is what we must be aware of once and for all. We should not confuse that, that special right with the human dominion. When God said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, he refers to two preconditions. Let us read Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. 6 to 28. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blesses them and say to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish and in the sea and birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Can you see two prerequisites in there when God announces the intention of creating humans. First of all, he confirmed that humans and all other creatures should be interconnected. We all are created out of the complex web of interrelationships in mutual dependencies. And second, God emphasizes that humans are created in God's own image and likeness. What does this mean? God creates humans in his image and likeness, not just to bless humans, but to bless all living creatures with divine goodness and intention. To be exact, in the, in the just and compassionate rule of God as God does. Are you with me? Again, the uniqueness of humans in Genesis 1 does not imply a position at the top of some ascending scale of other creatures. It is certain that God allows us to dominate over other living creatures, but only in the image of God and the rule of interrelationship. Creation in divine image is what qualifies humans to exercise the significance of creation in the, in the divine image. I heard this story from my friend. He told me this funny story. A few days ago, 
I was tooling along through a neighborhood on my wheelchair when I noticed a young boy sitting on the retaining wall in front of his house, crying as if his heart was breaking. I pulled alongside the youngster and asked, son, what's the matter? Why are you crying so? The young boy said, I'm crying because I can't do what my 20 year old brother does. And my friend said, so I sat there and cried with him. It cannot be denied that the divine image or divine DNA in each of us has some problem for our sins. Even if that is the case, don't cry and don't give up. Actually, that problem cannot be a reason to reject living in God's image. Regarding the significance of recreation in God's goodness, the divine image within us is what qualifies humans to be interrelational to all, all other creations and to exercise dominion. Do you know why? Because creation is not merely for human life and creation's benefit for humans, but for God's glory seen in the whole creation. For instance, Psalm 104, 24 to 31, which is in many ways a liturgical equivalent to Genesis 1 celebrates God's creation within a framework of praising God. Let us read it together. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond the number. Living things, both large and small, there the ships go to and fro. Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there, all creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. The psalmist is taken out of himself, lifted out of the limited human preoccupations that dominate most of our lives. How? By his contemplation of the rest of God's plentitude of creatures. This is how we Christians bless the whole creation. God made creatures good. God so that human was very good. If we are tempted to think that it is simply the creation of humans, the last act on God's agenda that makes creation very good, we should note carefully that what God approves in this way is everything that he has made. God blesses the creatures he made on the fifth and sixth days. Both diversity and abundance belong to the Creator's will for creation. We need to recall that these characteristics of non human creation were very much more evident before humans came to fill the earth in the rampaging way that we have done. Humans are essential to the complete whole but so is every other component of this complex creation. Therefore, Ebenezer brothers and sisters, we have a responsibility to make the good of all creatures 
very good. Not in our own purpose, but in God's intention. We should love all creatures as God their creator does. We should appreciate the creatures not for the sake of human benefit, but none of us could live without gifts to those creatures, as the none of creatures of fifth and sixth days could live without those of the first four days. Even without considering our unique role as a human being, it is evident that our living and flourishing are entirely dependent on the creatures of the previous days. And among the land animals, at least on all living creatures. Because God originally designed humans to be the most connected of all, as well as the good of all creatures. In a world, we don't need to worship creatures. We worship God, but we should love, appreciate, and care for it, as God does, until the intention of God on human beings it was very good, becomes true in the whole creation. I pray that is true, that is true in your life and in mine. Everyone says, Amen. Amen. Now we continue the service with a hymn, More Voices, Second, Come All You People. Come all you people, come praise your maker. Come all you people, come praise your maker. Come all you people, come praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come praise your maker. Come all you people, come praise your maker. Come all you people, come praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. In Psalm chapter 40, verse 1, the King David, King David confesses like this. I awaited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. This time, let us pray for a while in silence for several things. First of all, let us pray for God's kingdom, glory, and righteousness. Second, let us pray for dedicating our beings with our offerings. Also, let us pray for our social issues in Canada, especially praise pray for the issue of poverty. According to recent report, in Canada, across Canada, around 5 million people have faced the trouble of poverty. Of course, we should pray for our church, Ebenezer United Church and each families. If you have any personal needs and wishes, just ask trust and listen. He'll respond to you in gentle and lowly. Let's pray for a while in silence. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, 
Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. We pray for all those in need, whether in body, mind, or spirit, that your healing light and presence will bring comfort and peace. We pray for Roy Dixon, Angie Fix, Michelle Gillette, Mavis Grange and her daughter, Dorothy Grant, Joan and Clyde's friends, David and Donnelly Gullison, Phyllis Harvey, Manique's mother, Iris, Diane McLean, as she cares for her cousin, Tanya's friend, Carol, and her family, Mirella's father, Doug's friend, Carol, whose brother's cancer has relapsed, Jim and Joyce's friend, Becky Shields, Rick Saunders, Diane's friend, Tokiko, Joseph Salins, Joseph Stepaniak, Mary's brother, Basil, Andrew Tankard and his wife, Cindy Chan and family as they grieve the loss of her mother in China, Connie's friend, Elaine Leba and her daughter, Andrea, Linda Wilson's friend, Linda and her family, Susan's friends, Joy and Reg and their daughter, Erin, Heather and Will, Sarah and Demetrios and all those we name in silence. Let me pray for offering and people. Lord, our rock and redeemer, thank you that you are infinitely, consistently, and perfectly wise. You have said that whatever we give is acceptable if we give it eagerly. You have said that we should give according to what we have. Help us to bring our offerings with an eager heart, not as on comparison with others, but as an act of worship to you. May we find the comfort we desire in you and the strength we need in your name. May your presence be with us every hour of the day. Lord, we pray for the needs of our people today. We've all come with individual and very personal needs. Maybe nobody on earth knows about the struggles and burdens they are facing. And you know, and you invite us to bring everything to you in prayer. So we each, each reach out to you, and we know that you are already reaching out to us. We ask you to meet our needs in this morning and give us the assurance that you are answering our prayers. We pray for many different kinds of physical needs, financial needs. There are those who emotional needs. Some need healing of relationships. Whatever they are, Lord, we bring them to you because you can do something about them. 
eternal God, maker of heaven and earth. We also ask that your mercy and grace reach those who have suffered, suffered from war, continued bombings and sanctions. Hear the cries of the thousands who grieve the death of their children, their family, the death of security and well-being. We pray for the people of Ukraine as well as Russia, and they would create peaceful relations with one another. We pray for our political leaders that they will have the wisdom to provide the security not based on the threat of power, but the vulnerability, vulnerability of compassion and the vision of being world citizens. We pray for justice and peace, a justice that tears down walls that divide the nations, a peace that builds bridges of hope between peoples. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us do Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we close the service, we are going to sing one more hymn. Tanzania traditional song, More, More Voices 97, Listen, God is Calling. Ebenezer families, God be in your head and in your understanding. God be in your eyes and in your looking. God be in your mouth and in your speaking. God be in your heart and in your thinking. God be at your end and at your departing. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and all things in you. Amen.
Now we have finished today's service. Uh, thank you for joining today's worship. Uh, I thank you everyone, especially thank you for Nigel, for your help. Um, I do like to remind that next week we are going to have the Holy Communion. So we are going to have a special guest after the service. Have a wonderful day and may God bless you.